Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life, like I did. If someone can let me know that they can see and hear me, that would be awesome. Technology is always a question mark. Um, I'm going to jump right on in. And hello to Victoria and Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hello from Sweden. Hope you're all doing very well. I'm doing quite well. You may hear chickens in the background, and you may hear Jack patting around, and you may hear the finches that 15th generation are living inside a giant set of chimes on our side porch. I mean, a huge set of chimes. Okay, today's topic actually was um, came from one of my patrons. Hey, Judy. I have a private support group and I do month uh, daily video snippets, I call them. They're 8, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes long, however long I talk. And the topics, most of them are suggested by patrons. So this one was one that was suggested by a patron. And I'm going to read it to you as they wrote it. I don't know whether who, who wrote this because it's anonymous. This time you've lost your weight and kept it off. What makes this time so different? than all the other times? It's a really good question, right? So I'm going to give a quick uh, recap. Cancel. A quick recap on my experience. I was morbidly obese, ob overweight, ob obese, morbidly obese um, for 30 years. I didn't go from being really cute and, and trim to morbidly obese overnight. It was a progression. And I tried all the things that you try. I did know since 1977, when I was still cute and trim, that low carb worked for me. I'd gotten the, uh, I put on about 13 pounds in college, second year of college. I wanted to lose it, got the uh, Atkins Diet Revolution book, did the induction period for like two weeks, lost the weight, threw the book away. Then throughout the course of time, I would kind of revisit low carb, except for in the 80s when it was just, you know, considered to be so dangerous. And I would revisit it and I would do it. And then I would, it wouldn't work. And I got to the point where I just, you know, this is clearly not for me. Even the one time when I had lost, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds, 25 pounds during the induction period of Atkins. It wasn't called keto at that point. This was in the early 2000s, I believe. And I allowed a problematic medical diagnosis that irritated me. Tell me, well, screw it. Pass the bagels. And some of you know that story about the pyramid of bagels. So, and I, you know, put the weight back on and I just, you know, spent a lot of time saying, well, I just can't go the rest of my life without carbs. I'm just clearly not, this is not for me. Um, I had given up on losing weight. I was 55. I was not in a good place in my own brain. My life has always been great. I was not a, in a good place in my brain. And I, I reckoned that I was going to be told at my next doctor's visit that I was going to need to start addressing type 2 diabetes. I was not yet diagnosed, but I knew I was heading there. I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Came across the white coat video of my now friend, Dr. Eric Westman at Duke University. And the answer is this. And here's the protocol as I learned it and as I have practiced it since January 8th, 2014. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs just means more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below, don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. It's fatty sources of protein, non-starchy vegetables in limited amounts, and full fat dairy in limited amounts. Don't eat if you're not hungry, the hardest part. Stop when you're satiated, second hardest part. That's the protocol. So I didn't count anything other than grams of carbohydrate. I didn't count grams of protein or fat. I didn't pay attention to time of day eating or the so-called restricted whatever and the intermittent whatever that word is. I'm not going to use it because I don't think that word means what people think it means. With a nod to the Prince's Bride. That's all I did. I Next time I ate, I laid off the carbs. So go to... 2022. I've been weight stable for five years, going on six years. It will soon be six years. 
So what was different this time? What was different? This time I lost the weight and I've kept it off as opposed to before. What was different? Now, interestingly, my husband, who is often, we're almost hip to hip when I'm doing these video snippets. He's preparing or eating his breakfast or preparing my coffee. He hears the snippet topic. And he had a different take on that question. I mean, he thought the answer was, I'm going to tell you what his thought was, and this is true, and I've talked about this before. One difference was my motivation was different. I had thrown in the towel on losing weight. I just decided that the universe wanted me to be the fat, funny friend. That was my role. Smart, engaging, clever, gregarious, yet but fat. I gave up on losing weight. I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. It became about my health and not about my cosmetics. And I also didn't feel well physically. Everything hurt. So he says, well, there's the difference. But I, getting to the point, uh, let me see if I can pull this back up again. This time you have lost your weight and kept it off. What makes this time so different than all the other times? I didn't go off the plan. That's the difference. I mean, it's a really basic answer. I didn't stop. All the other times, for whatever reason, I stopped. I would I do great for 10 days. Then, ah, no. Let's see, what? Tortilla chips. I love tortilla chips. And I've had a rough day. And it's our ritual. We go to our favorite Mexican restaurant. We get three baskets of tortilla chips. How am I supposed to pass that up? I'm, all the things we tell ourselves. What was different this time is I didn't do that. I just took it every meal at a time. I took it every 15 minutes at a time. I just laid off the carbs. There you go. That was the difference. And I dare say, and I in a, in a few minutes, I'm going to turn my attention to the lovely comments from the lovely people who come here. Usually the comments are lovely. Um. And I want to hear about your success stories, either scale victories or non-scale victories or triumphs or whatever. But I know that there are people who, it was their first at-bat, second at-bat, third at-bat. It's very rare the person who does this and gets it the first time. Because we have to unlearn not only decades and generational decades of what we've been told, wrong information, we also have to overcome habits that have been ingrained to us since before we were making decisions about what we ate. A lot of this is habitual. So that was the difference. Why did I keep it off this time? It's because I didn't, I stick with the program. I'm not tweaking. I tweak minor things. I didn't reintro reintroduce carbs at all. I didn't you know, start any gimmicky stuff. I didn't eat so-called keto food that's on the label. It didn't even exist when I started this. This is a fairly new phenomenon. It's the bandwagon. I don't fault food manufacturers for doing it. Next couple of years, it'll be something else. It was paleo before that, and it was Whole30, and then it was low fat, and they'll find the next thing. I just didn't play. If it was not on page four, I didn't eat it, which means I didn't eat Almond flour. Now, I do have, I make almond cookies for my husband. And on a super rare occasion, I will have a couple of them. But I'm talking about two cookies every six weeks, and they're this big. I just didn't play. Almonds are not on page four. Nuts are not on page four. Ergo, almond flour is not on page four. Alternative flours are not on page four. After dipping my toe in a little bit at the very beginning, I don't mess around with fake baked goods. That got me in trouble in the, I don't want a fake version of the thing that got me in trouble in the first place. Because let's face it, a lot of these foods, if it looks like a muffin, even though it's supposedly super low carb, if you eat 10 of them because you love muffins, not going to help. You know, I, I have to be very careful with myself around mashed cauliflower. It's one of those things. I am careful with it. I had to learn to be careful with it because it's easy to overconsume even low carb, zero carb foods. It's very possible to be in ketosis and not lose weight. For instance, I've been in ketosis essentially 
for eight years. I checked my checked my ketones this morning. I do I don't check them. I do them on Saturday mornings because I, I have a different little side experiment going. I'm curious. This morning, my blood ketone beta hydroxybutyrate levels, the blood ketone measure, 2.0. Glucose, 75. Scale, essentially flat. So it's, you know, you have to listen to our body. Don't eat if we're not hungry. Stop when we're satiated. Those are the two hardest parts. The food is very straightforward. Fatty sources of protein. Eat the fat that comes with the protein. You don't load up on protein. You don't load up on fat. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Yikes. Okay, so there was the difference. And and other people can lay testament here. I'm sure there will be, be people who will say, yep, same thing for me. I knew this worked. I had the very first edition of Atkins. Or I knew this worked some, from the time I'm 20. Or I've been doing this for five years and it finally worked because I just didn't stop. I didn't stop. I've stuck with the exact same program since January 8, 2014. And I'm very happy. And it's worked out well for me. I'm strong. I'm muscular for me. <laughs> I'm muscular for me. And I'm happy. And I'm not in pain. Even my knee that I wrenched some time ago is not even hurting me that much today. I haven't had an upper respiratory infection in a really long time. I used to get like three or four a year. What was the difference? I didn't stop. I didn't play. I didn't listen. I didn't listen to the wackadoos. There are wackadoos out there talking. We have to be careful of our sources of information. For one thing, a lot of them are trying to sell stuff that is unnecessary and, and can be counterproductive. And some of them just make, they just make up stuff from whole cloth. They're just pulling stuff, PFA, pulling it from the air. Or they heard somebody say it and so they think it's fact. Mm. Hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. Glass. Full of ice. In this case, it's no sugar, cran um, ginger ale, splash of diet cranberry, squeeze of lime. I might have to go to the store and get some diet tonic water. Kind of missing it a little bit. Okay. There we are. And I know that there are patrons here. I want to give a shout out to patrons. I also want to give, take a, a few seconds for the Shameless Commerce Division. Tip of the hat to the Car Talk guys. You do not have to purchase one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol, including page four. But I'll sell you mugs and books and stickers and T-shirts all day long. I'm wearing a T-shirt. It's one of the first I designed. You can see it at my this Teespring store. I C and I W. Go keyed with Casey. This is just subtle. I can and I will. That was one of the other things that changed. I had a different mindset. Instead of, I've never been able to do this. I, I always fail. I can't give up tortilla chips. I just decided I can and I will. Of course I can. I'm stronger than a cookie. I'm stronger than a tortilla chip. That's another t-shirt. Um, mug. Lay off the carbs. Lay off the excuses. Harsh, but true. And there's my mug on the back of the mug saying, if I can do this, you can do this. And a steel water bottle, which is actually pretty quality. Go keep with Casey and a bunch of stuff on the back. A 12-month record book. Of, this is just not dated because you can start this afternoon. You don't have to wait for next month or after the holidays or after whatever. It's just a bunch of stuff. You can see it. It's got inspirational quotes. One from Dr. Seuss. You have your brains in your head. You have your feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. Wisdom. You can see that at my blog, link below. Very few of these magnets left. Are you here out of hunger or out of habit? Like I'm almost out of these. Um, if hunger's not the problem, food is not the solution. And then other stuff. That commercial's over. I do want to say thank you to patrons. I have a private Patreon support group um, made up of a few hundred wonderful people. And depending on your pledge level, 20 uh, pre-recorded video snippets from my kitchen counter every morning. I usually have pillow hair and runny makeup and may or may not have had coffee. The suggestions come from patrons. That's 20 of those a month. Going up from there, a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast a month. Going up from there, a handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom a month. And going up from there, a 50-minute one-on-one with me. There, commercial over. Thank you. I do appreciate. The patrons allow me to do this. So thank you. I will always provide public free content as long as people are interested because those to whom much is given, much is expected. 
Now, I'm going to turn my attention to you guys. And I just jump in. Hey, Mary Manchester. Concerned owl. Hi from Western Mass. Okay. Oh, I heard screech owls or barn owls. You guys will know better. Last uh, couple of mornings, it's like early morning, maybe 4 a.m., 3 a.m. I hear it sounds like people being tortured, but it's owls, I'm sure, every now and again. Hello from Maine, right? Stacy Jacobs, Rita Therese. Hi from Melbourne. Wow, it's um, it's the other time of day with you. Jenny, the generational decades are definitely something we must relearn. Years and years of carb and sugar overload. After one year on keto, it has been easy to get back up and after trial and error. We have to learn what works for us. Thank you, Jenny. Sharon Wild, is it true it's harder to lose weight with advanced age? Well, all I can tell you is I started at 55, which some would consider advanced stage. Sounds pretty young to me right now. I lost like I never lost before. Never. I did. You can see it in my blog, my not before photos, because none, none of those at my highest weight actually exist that I know of. I tried the summer of the triathlons. I trained for and participated in four or five sprint level triathlons thinking, move more, eat less. Whole, over the entire six months, I lost 11 pounds and I was really working out and trying training and and I was in, I was hungry all the time and in pain. No, no, this works. I know that there are people in their 70s. My, my favorite story is of Marie who gave up sugar. I, she she and her son came to my Go Keto Casey Roadshow in Portland, Oregon. And they drove down from Seattle. And she told the story about how she gave up sugar three years ago. And her life is so much better. And she does this, that. Great. That's that's great, Marie. When did you give up carbs? Three years ago. Oh, great, Marie. How old are you? 93. Okay, if Marie can do it. We can all do it. I am going to change my screen a little bit so that I can read a little bit better. It's hard for me to read. Um, Karazi, the difference for me was the almost immediate reduction in cravings and feeling satisfied after having a meal never happened before. I was always hungry because if you're burning sugar for fuel, because it can't be stored and it's a fast burning fuel, your brain tells you, get me some more, get me some more. When you're burning fat for fuel, it's not fast burning and we've got plenty on board. It can be stored. It's stored as fat. Actually, glucose is stored as fat. Jenny writes, indeed, the less cravings you get, the easier you can stick to it. That's the most important part of keto. The palate changes too, which is huge. And you get more satisfied on keto. I agree with all of that. I told myself actually out loud, I can't go the rest of my life without eating tortilla chips. I mean, it, you know, and if you tell yourself you can't do something, it definitely makes it difficult to do it. But now... We go, we, well, it's been a really long time since we've gone because we can cook everything the way we like it. But the last time we went to our favorite Mexican restaurant, we were both fully keto. My husband started this about six months after I did, not for weight loss, but for health, just to, and he was not unhealthy. He just wanted to make sure he didn't become unhealthy with advancing age. We took our own pork rinds. Restaurant didn't care. They came with a basket of chips. We waved them off. They, okay, great. They brought salsa. We ate salsa and we had carne asada and pollo, pollo, whatever it was. And we enjoyed it. No rice, no beans, extra pica de gallo, spicy salsa and meat. I couldn't have cared less about those tortilla chips. I wasn't tempted. I didn't crave them. I actually, they kind of seem, they kind of give me a headache when I think about them now. Heidi Crane from Minnesota. Hi from Minnesota. You, uh, love your channel. Thank you. Christy Calichica. Hello from, and good morning from California. Hey, L. Andrews writes, first time catching Casey live. Yay. Oh, uh, speaking of that, some people say, I never know when you're going live. I used to go at noon Eastern time on Saturdays. I've moved it to 9 a.m. Eastern on Saturdays. If you subscribe, I don't like to ask people, say, subscribe to me and give me them. I don't love that. But if you want to be notified when I'm going to go live, you do need to subscribe and click the bell icon, the notification icon. But you also need to make sure your device or whatever you're using allows notifications from YouTube because you can have it set on YouTube. But if you've told your phone or your tablet or whatever, I don't want to hear any notifications. You won't get the notifications. Okay. Um, hello from Tejas. 
Texas writes Linda Bridges. Kathy L., how can we get your help? Well, uh, I don't know what kind of help you are talking about or, or need, but my Patreon support group is a really good place to start. I've often said, I think people become patrons not to get access to me, but access to each other. But if you want to check it out, go to my blog. I try to have my blog as the clearinghouse for everything that I talk about. Concerned Al, does the Patreon have a group where you can, oh yeah, absolutely, have a group where we can chat, get help or suggestions from others? Well, there's the Zoom group group sessions. Um, Yeah, there are videos, it's like a Zoom session with whoever is on it. There are the live streams where people chat with each other on Crowdcast, which is very much like this type of live stream, except it's on Crowdcast and different type of platform. Um. But yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, there's one-on-one support. Charlene Johnson was watching some of the speakers at Salt Lake City Conference yesterday. I don't remember which speaker said this, but it made sense to me. You crave what you eat. That would have been Dr. Eric Westman. Yeah, you do. If you don't eat it, you don't crave it. Here we, we By the way, the Durham support group meetings with Dr. Eric Westman and me are starting back up in real life, in person, in May, May 3rd at the Durham Hilton near Duke. Um, and we, I moderate the meetings with him. So it's two of us and people ask questions, they come up. But he always says, Casey, ask me if I crave cigarettes. And I'll say, Dr. Westman, do you crave cigarettes? And he'll say, no. And I'll say, why not? And he says, because I don't smoke. I mean, almost every time. Absolutely. Uh, Queenie in the house. Hi, all. Victoria O. I really like this new time. Good. I'm so glad. Jackie Bennett. Me too. Casey and coffee. I actually have a mug on the Teespring that says coffee with Casey. I bought one and then I dropped it. I need to buy another one. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn, love your glasses. Thank you. Amazon. Seven sets of readers in all different colors. These are my favorite. The tortoise shell. $15. Queenie in the house, concerned owl, Massachusetts here too. Thank you. And Christy Cali Chica, a little early for California, but no worries. I'm an early riser anyway. I would like to, if, if you're comfortable doing it, sharing your experience. My hair. My hair is a constant disaster. I don't love the way it's shaped, but I have a feeling it's not my hair. It's my head that I don't like the way it's shaped. If you have whether it's, you know, I lost X number of pounds or I'm down two sizes or a half a size or I'm off medications or I influenced my nephew or now my husband has finally done it and yes, his COPD is resolved and he doesn't have acid reflux anymore or I started a group at my, you know, in my library or at my um, temple or church and now we're all supporting each other, anything. So let's, I, I love these. I started this in the first January live stream. Share your success stories, and people really gravitate towards them. Marianne Austin, New York here. Been doing 20 carbs or less for three weeks. Lost three pounds. Do you think I'm eating too much legal foods? Think perhaps I'm overeating. Here's what I do when I'm talking with someone one-on-one. -on -one. They'll say, I don't understand. I'm, I'm only on page four, and I'm not losing any weight, or even people I've put on five pounds. First question I ask is, are you burning fat for fuel? Are you, have you measured whether you're in ketosis? You don't have to. And some people say, no, I'm not going to do that. But you can. And the the uh, urine strips are perfectly legitimate. The, you'll hear another bunch of BS out there that they're not effective and that if you have a reading on there, you're losing your ketone. No, the urine strips are perfectly effective. They're medical devices that were devo <laughs> developed decades ago for type one diabetics. So they're not defective. If you're burning fat for fuel, great. But that doesn't mean weight loss. That means you're burning fat for fuel. Second question. Okay. You're burning fat for fuel, but you're either not losing weight or you're putting on weight. Are you overeating dietary fat? Fat bombs, which is, you know, there are probably 2,500 Facebook groups and YouTube channels about and cookbooks about fat bombs. No oily coffee, bunch of, you know, loading up your coffee with butter, MCT oil, coconut oil, and Lord knows what else. If you're burning fat for fuel, but you're consuming by mouth all this extra dietary fat, your body doesn't need to burn body fat because it's getting 
what it needs by your mouth. Eat the fat that comes with the protein. That's not considered added dietary fat. Poultry with the skin, eggs with the yolks, ribeye with the fat, bacon with the fat, chuck, ground chuck with the fat, ground beef with the fat, pork chops with the fat. Do Just eat the fat that comes with the protein. I said, no, no, I'm not doing any of that. I'm not overeating dietary fat at all. I'm just doing, okay. Well, it might be that you're consuming more food than your body requires. Or if you're maintaining the amount of food your body requires. Yes, it is very, and we have to relearn this. We eat too much food, y'all. We eat too much food. It's that simple. Almost all of us eat too much food. Queenie in the house was vegan for two years, got ill. Keto few months, fibromyalgia gone, and brain coming back. Hot diggity dog. At Christy Kelly Cheek, if it says keto on the package, leave it on the shelf and don't buy it. There's really almost no shelf-stable product that is, is keto-friendly. They have got to add stabilizers to make them shelf-stable. Well, stabilizers. And those are almost always starches, which is sugar. Um, Kara Z, the increased energy is wonderful. I am so much more active in living life, not just observing it. Re-enter your life, man. Marlene Easton, love your videos. I've learned so much from you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stephanie Lynn, yes, so much more energy. Did 45 minute, minutes of aerobics yesterday, and I'm 64. Yes, you. Mary Manchester, what range should your ketones be? Okay, thank you, Mary, for the question. Now, you can be losing weight and feeling good and not register anything. So people's body chemistry can be different. But if you want to go by, with you know, if you're using the urine strips, first of all, don't test first thing in the morning because the acetoacetate, which is the byproduct of burning fat for fuel that is measured in the urine, can be diluted because your bladder's full because you've been in bed all night. So te test if the color is anything other than, than taupe, neutral. If it's light, light pink, light pink, pink, light, light purple, purple, dark purple, any of those, anything other than neutral, you're burning fat for fuel. Congratulations. On the blood meter, uh, it has been accepted 1.5 millimolars per liter to three, but that's kind of old stuff. And Stephen Finney is now saying, because that, that, they're doing a lot of research at Verta Health, depending on your body type and your body composition, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 millimolars. For instance, I was two this morning, but that's my body chemistry. I've been known to have 5.7, but that's my body chemistry. My husband, he's happy if he gets to 1.0. He's burning fat for fuel. But it, it, you have to find your range. Mostly you can go by how you feel. Mini Pearl 105, good morning from Texas. Um, Donna Ter Tere, lost 11 pounds in three weeks. Feel great, that's great. Linda Bridges, I need to replay this every hour. I'm letting life get in my way big time. If hunger's not the problem, food is not the answer. Life is always going to come at you. I use that excuse so many times. I, on my calendar, my 2022 calendar I made um, for people bought. There's a one month that says, uh, when making food decisions, employ the BLAST method, B-L-A-S-T. Don't make a decision about eating if you're bored, lonely, angry, stressed, or tired. Otherwise, you know, other in other words, when you're vulnerable. Judy Porterfield, good job, everyone. So many success stories. Keto for life, not a diet, a lifestyle. It is technically a diet. I mean, people get all verklempt about it. Diet is a noun as well as a verb. People follow a kosher diet. They don't say it's a kosher way of life. It is a diet, like a vegan diet. It's a diet. And it's also a way of eating. Concerned Al, my ketones blood tested are always super high, 0.4.0 to 6.0, that's fantastic. It's your body chemistry. But you don't get extra points in heaven for having higher points. I mean, people say, oh, I wish I could have like you do. No. I'm Like I said, if burning fat for fuel, if high ketone readings, blood ketone readings meant weight loss, I would be see-through. I'm not. I just feel good. Can you hear the chickens? Jeez. That's Dory and Speckle, I believe. 
Dory just is a loud mouth. Speckle likes to announce when she's laid an egg. You can see our eggs. This is some of them. We got more back there. Jenny Elkloff, consistency on keto affects every part of my life. I'm going to guess you mean that, oh my gosh, I've gotten so consistent. I've had success. What else have I thought maybe I wasn't ready to do or couldn't do? And now I'm going to try. Because if I could lay off the carbs when I thought I never could, hmm, maybe I can do other things. And Dory writes Mary Manchester. Mary's a patron. They hear my chickens. Um, Concern writes, I wish they were lower. I'm worried I may... There's, that's not, that's another thing. That's not it. You're not, oh gosh, I've gone too far in the weight law, weight, fat loss range. No, if you're burning fat for fuel, you're burning fat for fuel. It's like being pregnant. You either are or you aren't. So don't worry about that. If you are not losing weight, are you losing inches? If you're not, neither losing weight nor inches over four or five weeks, not over 10 days, just ask yourself how much food you're eating. Maybe you can cut back. Dave's so cute. Love the sound of the chickens. Send me some of those eggs, writes Mary. Okay, friends, I've got a, actually a patron video group session at 10 a.m., so I'm going to sign off and get ready for that. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your Saturday, and thank you for sharing your stories. Um, I really appreciate it, and... Um, Keep your carbs, 20 grams or fewer. Total not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. No matter what time the clock says. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're hungry, eat. Stop when you've had enough. Slow up eating. That's one of the best things you can do to reach satiety before you've inhaled all the food. It's, and plus, it just looks gross. People shoveling food into their face really quickly, hunched over their plate like, oh my God, you're not going to get mine. Sit back. Enjoy the food. Eat slowly. Let leptin, the satiety hormone, give it a little bit of time to get to your brain. If you're in the Durham, North Carolina area on May 3rd, uh, go to my blog and RSVP, please, or you can see it at Facebook. I put as an event. Please let us know if you're coming because there's a buffet dinner and the hotel needs to know approximately how many people are coming. But don't say you're coming if you're not coming. If you live in, you know, New Zealand, unless you're going to be traveling to Durham. And then the following Monday, the Monday after that, whenever that is, go Keto with Casey meetup in Greensboro, North Carolina. Both of these are free. Just come and hang out and talk. All right, guys. Um, uh, Heidi Crane, do you have to be on Facebook to become a patron? Absolutely not. No, no. Separate things. Not a big fan of Facebook, I have to tell you. Bye all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next time. God willing in the creek, don't rise.